Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is another video showing the updates in this high-end audio install that you could see many videos of. If you haven't seen this build before then please go to playlist uh, or just go to description. I'm gonna put the playlist to description where you can find all the single videos showing every single part of this system how it was built. But I thought to update you uh, now as well because we changed a few things and I would want to show the car around for you just like we would do it on a competition because it's important for the owner as well because this car was built for competition so we just do the same process as judges would expect you to present a car so we would start from the front and over here there's not much to show other than the factory battery and how we have the power running to the back so according to emma rules the fuse has to be within 40 centimeters which here is very short so we don't have to show uh, proof of uh, measurement of the length of the cable which is fused over there it's a zero gauge cable and it's fused within 20 uh, sorry 250 amps and um, the fuse holder is put on with a bracket as you can see it's bolted on um, nice and simple actually that was done by the previous installer before the car got to us but it's just fine then as we go along you can see um, the front end in the car so it's a three-way front end with a front sub that we can see here so the tweeter was custom built into the a-pillars um, then the mid-range was built into the dashboard so the whole dashboard was taken out if you want to see pictures of it then you have to go to playlist and then you can see how it was done but for a judge we would instruct to see the book because we have an installation book and they could see the pictures of the installation over there but the whole dash was pulled out um, plywood ring was fiber filled into the dash um, the drivers use machine bolt into machined inserts and there's a trim ring that sits around the driver which gives a clean finish because it, it, we didn't have a smooth dash to make a simple fitment because we have that step in the dash but this way we managed to put the driver where we wanted to mid base mid base installation was probably the most challenging in this car where we took the whole uh, footrest out and the driver is using not just the airspace of the kick area but it's also using the airspace of the whole floor so the whole carpet which was really thick was taken out cut out all the way you can see in the videos in the playlist and um, uh, this mat is now velcroed down but underneath it all the way to here you have the enclosure coming and it's using quite a lot of airspace if my memory doesn't fail then I think this side was around 16 17 liter whereas the other side is slightly larger and before people worry about uh, why they are not similar size um, I can just assure you that even if the enclosure sizes were the same they wouldn't sound the same because you don't sit in the middle so we try to make them as big as possible to have less compression on the driver and to let them play uh, more freely and play lower which was important in the first incarnation of this installation because we didn't have a front sub now they don't have to play that low but what was really important to locate the driver at the best location where we can minimize the puff length difference between left and right which is also true for the mid-range um, we created this footrest here that helps a little bit because obviously you can't put your leg where the driver is um, but as it's an automatic you don't need your left leg anyway now you can just cut it off right <laughs> um, but that footrest definitely helps the whole enclosure was fiberglassed and built up from um, several layers of chop mat and plywood uh, buffle on the top and there are two bolts underneath when the speaker is taken out there are two bolts that go into the floor into uh, rib nuts fitted into the steelwork of the car that bolt the whole enclosure into place but to be fair it sits so firmly in place that even without the bolts it would stay in place but with the bolts it's secure absolutely secure and it gives us a perfect non-resonant environment there's literally zero rail with the mid-base 
I go to the other side first and show the rest of the speakers before we talk about, talk about the back end of the car. So on this side you can see the other mid base, same way using the whole, the whole floor. And you can see a front sub as well that we shared a video of the way it was built, fiberglassed into the place of the glove box and is bolted up at three places to the crash bar into the steelwork of the car. So this way it's rigid and it's safe. And we used a lot of, lot of stuff in this enclosure to make it rigid, um, even steel powder to add weight and rigidity to the whole structure. Um, and it's using the Akiton 10 inch prototype driver. Something similar is gonna be the production version at one point. Then we have the controller of the Zapco HDSP5 mounted over here, which can be completely hidden. We used an aluminium bracket for the player that was filled in and trimmed. Here we go. And we also have actually, yeah, we have a FIO M11 DAP player that's wired on coax. So it runs on coax digital in this 3D printed mounting. We have the USB in the middle, coax on the side and um, this way it can be easily removable just pull it out just like that if i can pull it out there you go you can see the connectors there charging and the coax so it just slides back a bit of a push and it's back in place just like that so it's completely mobile the owner can use it at home or anywhere else all right so then Let's go to the Amtrak area from this side. So over here, you can see the back of the amplifiers that now we change the back plates off. So it looks a bit fancier. So we have two six channel amplifiers. The top one runs the tweeter and the mid range up front with the front sub. The second one runs the mid base bridge on these channels and the rear fuel drivers where the rear fuel drivers were fiberglassed into the C pillars as you can see, the hybrid audio add to SEs using a steel ring and meshing bolts to fix the drivers in place. Down at the bottom, there's a, oh, by the way, yes, these are the Zepco 150.6 each and then a 400.2 that runs the subwoofer at the back that you will see in a second. This side is the signal. That's why you can see the back of the DSP with all the outputs the Z16 with 16 channels and that side is power that's the small LED controller running the ambient lights in the rack you can see the strips up there um, and there's a strip by the sub as well but we also have another LED controller for the crazy edge lit perspex panels every single cable was protected with braided um, sleeving as you can see over there as well, everything is labeled, every single cable. There's a video where we have a proper uh, breakdown of the whole amplification and the wiring, how it's done. We also made a cover for the relay that separates the front and the rear battery. So when the car is at standstill and the engine doesn't run, then we only run on the rear lithium battery, which is a huge 138 amp hour lithium battery keeping our floating voltage at 13.2 so we can actually play this system seven eight hours without the engine without any problem and, and the voltage is still at like 12.8 so that's that's about the wreck and from this side we have something a bit fancier before people ask themselves you know what's the point of all this crazy lighting well, clearly it doesn't make the system sound any better. It's clearly just for the show. We wanted to create something simple and as we got three hands on it, then we wanted to, to create something special, something artistic. So that's where we use special LEDs that have 144 LEDs per meter. So we have more than 500 LEDs running. Uh, we have several programs and in some of the other videos in the playlist, you can see how it can be operated from a tablet or from a smartphone through an app and it links to the controller via the Wi-Fi. So over here you can see the three amps 
as I showed from the back. All the amps were mounted on steel bars running, running across the rack, you can see there. And then they were bolted on with machined bolts, if I can zoom onto it, you can see there. So everything is mounted securely. The DSP was also fitted with machine bolts into um, a panel down there, as you can see, which is the Zapco HDSP5 Z16. So we have the coax coming from, from the FIO M11. We also have speaker level integration from the factory head unit because we had no other option, but that's just for radio, nothing else listening to news. We have the HD Bluetooth module in the unit as well. Plus this DSP can use the HD player built into the device and you can control it from the controller from up front. Back here you can see the signal diagram, how the system builds up. All the sources, all the amplifiers and the speakers. And on that side you can see the power, di the power diagram showing all the cable thicknesses and all the fuse sizes. And we will have another piece just for show. We also created a little panel where we will need stickers, which will show from the top the main power cable, the way it was terminated with ferrule protected with heat shrink and the cables protected with braided sleeving. Then underneath you have, so on the top that's a zero gauge, underneath you have a four gauge cable with ferrules on each end from the distribution to the amplifier. Then there's a tiny little demonstration of the signal cable using Chernov special cable with classic plugs. Then we have an example of the speaker cable, the way it was made. So at the speaker side, we have XD connectors to make sure that if we ever have to remove a speaker, then the connection is safe. And then on the other side, it's terminated with ferrules and protected with heat shrink. So Underneath that, let me put it down there. Underneath that, we have an LED cable. You can see the RGB and the ground. On the other side, we have a simple little connector, which again makes connection of LED lights simple. Um, then we have the fancy LED. Don't ask me what model it is. If you really want to find it, you will find it on eBay. It's 104 LEDs per meter that will help you to find it with the same connector, but that's the uh, male side, that's the female side. So we could demonstrate both sides of it. And then we have DSP power and LED power, and that's a remote line. Then we have a little demonstration of the products used in the car uh, for deadening. And then we have isolation and absorption, which also isolates used on door cards and underneath panels. And then we have different sizes of the fuses a big ANL for the main fuse which is actually there there's one big fuse holder there for the rear battery which is underneath this plexi panel uh, we can get to the battery easily within like a minute and then we have the other fuses for the amps and smaller consumers for the SPN lights and whatnot so let's just put it there so when the owner goes to shows he can you can show this off it's just an extra piece for demonstration of the installation um, so this latest addition to the system was this um, acoustic elegance ib15 au custom built for us because we wanted a beautiful custom finish on it to match the copper amplifiers we also have apollo upgrade on it which is not really necessary for uh, sub bass uh, range but it makes the sub look just a little bit better and we also got that copper plated and um, before if you remember if you've seen videos of this system uh, we had a hybrid Clarus 15 in a huge sealed box basically we modified that box which is as wide as this trunk it was 80 liters so a little bit more than three cubic foot or just just around three cubic foot and it was nice in a sealed box it was a good sub however the front end is just at a level where this system required something very special that can keep up with with the front end in in terms of musicality accuracy and an extension 
because nothing is going to play that low as true IB application can. Um, some of you might have seen videos of me doing installations like that. If you haven't, please go to the playlist and then you can see separate playlists for trunk IB and true IB installations. So this is a true IB solution where we shifted the mounting of the top of the box down. We use the same mounting because actually the basket is the same size on the Clarus and this acoustic elegance. So we shifted it down, rebuilt the whole structure, put side walls in, retrimmed it, made it pretty. And then at the bottom, the car was cut out. So at the bottom, we have a 20 by 30 centimeter uh, square hole. And then that's the point when everyone wants to see it, what happened here. So I'm going to go down onto the floor and show it to you. Here we go. Actually, can you please pass me the torch? Then we can see a little bit more. So the floor pan of the spare wheel well is not even. And as you can see, um, that's why this frame for the protective foam is uh, bent. So we used a 10 millimeter um, HDP plastic frame that has the same cutout as the cutout of the steelwork in the car. We cut the steel and we protected it uh, with uh, suitable paint so it's not going to rust. And we put foam in between the plastic so when it's bolted up it isolates it and it also seals it all around. And we used this ring guard foam here that's absolutely transparent. It lets all the air uh, breathe and then get out of the car. So we use the cabin as our enclosure for the sub and it breathes to the outside but it doesn't let any water go in in. Again if you want to see what this foam is like go to the True IB playlist you will see a video which is called something like protection of IB subs then you can see uh, this foam in better detail but basically it's the same type of foam you see on PA out outdoor speakers so the water can flow down but it cannot penetrate the only way to let any water go in is if you drive into the lake which is which is deeper than the height from the floor which is here around 12 inches so yeah if you see water like that 12 14 inches maybe don't go in otherwise it's going to reach the driver but if the driver has a comb and surround that's not sensitive to to any water then you have less to worry about in my Honda when I had the FI drivers I didn't even have any protection literally nothing the driver you could see the drivers from underneath the car and they were there for more than a half year and a half or two years and they only had a bit of dust on it because when people worry about water underneath the car well first of all when you drive you move away so to the time anything could go up the car is moving in a direction away from anything going up and also the tires push the water to the outside not to the not to the um, inside of the car everything just flows underneath the car so nothing actually goes up as i said unless if you drive into your lake but don't do that um, for occasion when the car may have to go to an mot to the yearly mot then we have another plate which covers the hole um, completely so this can be bolted out we fitted inserts into the actual box which is above the steel and then these machine bolts hold this frame in place this can be taken off the other full cover plate put up and then that covers everything easy peasy so this is it from underneath here we go and that's pretty much pretty much it um, we wanted to do a few little changes to the system um, not to the speaker installation because many people ask me you know what else what more could we do to this car and quite a few people heard it um, not with the true IB sub only one person heard it actually today before it goes away which was the owner of the BMW 6 GT some of you could see that installation and, and that owner has the highest reference level he heard it today and I think he's in serious trouble right now because his BMW sounds very nice but what this car is doing in terms of accuracy and focus, how solid the focus in the car is and how pinpoint the staging is in this car. The realism is just something that everyone has to experience once. If you ever want to see this car, you can find it on Emma 
competitions in Denmark and then possibly at the Euro finals if we ever have it hopefully but the I'm sure the owner would be happy to show this system to you because it's worth to stand in the queue for that's that's for sure and um, even me me and Eddie we feel like yeah we should keep this car here and just demonstrate it to everyone then they would understand why currently this project is at 80 days that's another thing what may, people may want to know currently we have around 80 days put into this system yes a lot of labor probably we would have needed less if we didn't have to change amplifiers around because we changed those in uh, june and i was talking about that when i showed the ecotone front sub uh, we had our reasons why we had to change out the previous amplification and dsp and trust me if you ask it is it better now it is million times better yes they are cheaper amps cheaper dsp but the system is in a whole different level it works perfect we don't have any switching noises nothing do we nothing and it's really dynamic it's really detailed so that's the reason why i always use these ap amps if someone wants the best because they are not crazily expensive they are not cheap but uh, they are affordable and for the money that six channel is very difficult to beat honestly and yes less the wire because it's only three amplifiers and some people would rather fit instead of the two six channels 12 channels they would six, fit six amplifiers so that's way more work way more wiring way more space so here we go that's my opinion about these amps so this is probably where i'm going to leave this uh, you may see separate videos little teaser videos um, showing this car playing and walking around it although there are a few videos in the playlist showing the way it sounds when i was demonstrating the system with uh, demo 3 playlist um, the title playlist i have so you can listen to that as well and should you have any question drop us a message contact info is in description Feel free to comment, share this video, because nowadays we don't see too many extreme high-end sound quality systems like this. So it's worth to show it to people that this can be done. Not everyone requires it, but if you really want something special and if you are an audiophile, you are a music freak, then why not? It's definitely cheaper than some people spend in home hi-fi on some of their systems this is actually cheap if you really look at it that way and if you spend at least two three hours every day in your car then it's 100 percent worth it right i guess the owner doesn't say anything he's just sitting quietly in the corner and smiling here we go this is the end of this video guys if you want to see the pictures of the build actually i'm going to drop the pictures of this build to the end of this video so after i say the end words you can just stay and check some of the pictures of the finished product and i will see you very shortly in the next video i'm going to share probably tomorrow where we introduce a new project we are working on actually we have so many projects running right now that i struggle to keep up but tomorrow i will share another video so i'll see you in that one take care